Well, you know, they've survived really well. I can't remember the exact year that I made them, but I'm guessing it's about 37 years ago. I used to have the manuals for both of them, and I do recall on the Lusitania manual, at the first page I wrote the date, and then I also wrote the date on the last step, on the last page I guess, when I completed it. And I kind of jokingly said, it took me 40 days and 40 nights to make this Lusitania. Now the Titanic, I took a lot more time on that. It was, uh, I don't know, it just took more time. I, I did a little bit more painting. The Lusitania, I used the color of the plastic, whatever it happened to be. For instance, the black on the hull, actually on both of these, that's the black plastic. I never bothered to paint it. I should have. But it, it looks pretty good. Uh, so where do, I, where do I start here with this episode number one of the model ship? And uh, I may as well start way back at the beginning. Uh, when I was about nine, I guess it would be, because it was the Christmas of 1955, I got my first plastic model. And it was a 172 scale of a Lancaster bomber. And as luck would have it, we still have a picture that was taken of me holding that model. And uh, yeah, that was the beginning. Uh, plastic models actually had only been out for about 20 years before that. I think they started in Britain around uh, uh, 1936 or something. So that would be like 10 years before I was born. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's nothing new, plastic models. No, they have definitely improved, uh, e even since I made these uh, years ago. Uh, there was no photo etching parts at that time. At least if there was, I didn't know about it. Uh, so the detail that you can put on models now is um, a lot better. And I'm, I'm actually looking forward to trying to uh, work with photo etch. I've never done it before. It's going to be a new experience. Kind of excited about it. Uh, now, I've got to uh, get my model stuff back together again. I uh, found that I've only got about 10 little tins of paint left from the old days. And I've got one little brush that has, I think, six hairs on it that I used for little tiny details. But I've got to get a bunch more. I want to, I want to uh, teach myself how to uh, airbrush. And uh, places like the hull and so on, I want to airbrush it. I think I might be able to preserve the detail better rather than just painting it. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. That's, that's uh, several days or weeks down the road yet. Uh, yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure yet which model I, I want to, I'm going to get because the one I want is not, is uh, sold out here in Winnipeg. So I'm probably going to have to order it in and that order has not yet been placed. So I won't know until the box actually arrives uh, what I'm getting. And then you'll know. Anyway, this is uh, episode one. Sort of a strange beginning, I guess. No, uh about my clock here. Uh, after I posted it I got a lot of comments from people about the about this clock and uh, thank you very much by the way. Um, uh, but I would say every third or fourth comment it was sort of like to the effect of we'd like to see it finished. So okay I will but not today. Not even this week I don't think. Uh, but there will be an update episode on the, the big clock project. And uh, I, I was going to take the, uh, the frame here and I was going to use the 2x4s out of that to make the legs and, and framework for a model table that I want to make up, upstairs. There's no room down here for it. Uh, just to let you know what's happening.
This used to be uh, our so-called banquet table. Whenever the family all got together and we needed extra room around the table, this went up the stairs and we could uh, seat about 12 people around it. Mind you, some of them were kids, so they didn't take up a whole lot of room. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be using this for the tabletop for the workstation, for the, uh, the model, model workstation or whatever you call it. And, uh, yeah. I've uh, screwed a handle on here. Used to be, I used to be able to just pick this up and carry it up the stairs. A lot of things it used to be. I wish I could turn the clock back to the last time I carried this upstairs. Yeah. Family was all together. My wife hadn't been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and you know the story. Anyway, I'm stalling for time here because it's, it hurts. <laughs> now, those of you who are regular viewers, you've often heard me say something to the effect of, I don't do retakes or reenactments. And you can be assured this is not a reenactment. I definitely would not be doing this twice if I didn't have to. You know, I, I used to be able to squeeze through there a lot easier too. Something happened here. As I'm editing out this video clip here, the phone rings. It's from Cellar Dweller. And who's Cellar Dweller? Well, they're the people that I was dealing with a lot back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, I was beating a path to their door quite regularly. And they're the people that are bringing in my model for me. They said it is available at their distributor. And they're going to have it here in Winnipeg all being well by the end of next week. So at the end of next week, we're going to have a very interesting box opening video. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Now for those of you who are watching this and you're thinking to yourself any minute now that plywood's going to come shooting back down the stairs and old Ron's going to come rolling down behind it. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. However, I got to admit, my fingers were getting awful tired. And as a bit of a disclaimer here, those of you who have been watching over a period of years, you've noticed me getting progressively more decrepit. Well, the arthritis ain't getting any better. My knees are really hurting. I got to be careful not to twist them when I'm doing stuff like with this plywood on the stairs thing. Okay, I made it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow.